Hi ladies, today we're gonna go see a dietitian nutritionist. It's like a little field trip. So come with me, it's right down the street from our apartment. She's waiting for us now, her name's Kari. Our apartment's that blue building right there and we have the whole top floor which is five floors high. So we're on the fifth floor. But we're gonna go see Kari now, come on. You have that same kind of passion, and they are just going to just really relate to what you have to say. I'm excited <laughs> to be able to share with them the information that I have, so I think it's yeah. going to be good. It's one of those South African wonderful resources that I'm just happy to be able to share with them before I move away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi ladies, it's Menopause Barbie back with you today with Kari Yonke. See, I'm in South Africa and her name is Kari, K-A-R-I, -I, Yonker. We would say Junkers, but it's J-O-N-K-E-R and it's Yonker, and that's Afrikaans. <laughs> and so this is Kari Yonker. She's a dietitian nutritionist, and she's joining us today so that she can answer some of the questions you might have about seeing a dietitian nutritionist because you know, all these people are out there to help you, and I don't want you to have inhibitions in using them. So Kari has agreed to sit and talk with me for your benefit and talk about some of the things that might be going through your mind in terms of your desire to see a dietitian nutritionist wherever you are. So welcome, Kari, and thank you for doing this. We really appreciate it. So tell me, how often do you have women coming to you for the very first time in their lives because or at the time of menopause, whether they know it or not. Yeah. How common is that? Very common. <laughs> it's definitely one of the things that um, I think all of a sudden women experience their bodies are changing, they look different, they feel different. So at that point it might be the first time that they actually um, you know, decide to see a dietitian, or it could be that they've contemplated it for a long time, all of a sudden they Finally. can't manage it on their own anymore, yeah. and uh, that's when they'll come to the dietitian or the nutritionist. And do they usually know that they're menopausal, or are you the great bearer of great news? news. <laughs> Fantastic news! <laughs> um, I, a little bit of both. So sometimes you'll find a woman who maybe she was expecting something along those lines, but wasn't yeah. sure, and so what we'll normally do is look at the symptoms that she's experiencing, look at um, kind of the history, and then work with the doctor to try and figure out where she's at, just to get a good diagnosis. Because I think if, once you kind of have an idea and get a diagnosis of what's actually happening, I think it's far easier than uh, trying to swim upstream and make something that isn't really helping. So, <laughs> um, and when you when you are the one who delivers the information of hey. I think this is menopause and your metabolism has slowed down. Are they shocked? Are they relieved? Are they usually just okay with it? Do they feel better that it's a normal event? Or what is the typical response other than kind of, oh God, now I have to work harder yeah. <laughs> to keep my weight in line? I think it's a bit of a, it is a bit of a shock. I think uh, even though you expect it, and even though you know it's something that will happen, yeah. I think it's a, it's a thing of uh, still a thing of okay, this is it. It's yeah, real. yeah. And um, but I think also empowering because I think once you know what's actually going on with your body, and once you understand what's happening, it's far easier to do what you need to do. Absolutely. So I think. Uh, yes, maybe a little bit of shock. Yeah. And I think a little bit of tiptoeing around it at first. Are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> Is this real? Is this happening? So no way, know. that's not happening. Me. I'm not <laughs> menopausal. So I refuse to be menopausal. <laughs> so I think there is a little bit of that at the beginning, but once you know you get through it, I think it's yeah. just easier. And is there a special dietary plan or an approach to a menopausal woman or is it all just a matter of tailoring to the individual regardless of her menopausal status? 
I think one of the most important things is to find someone who's willing to work with you to figure out what's best for you. Because at the end of the day, there definitely isn't a one size fits all. There's definitely not one special diet that everyone in the whole world should be following. I think that it's very important to find someone who will work with your medical history, with your yeah. diet history, with absolutely everything, combine it all together and figure out what with you yeah. what the best thing is for you. Doesn't that sound like what I tell you? <laughs> we are of the same mindset here, so take note, you know, this business of doing what's right for you and tailoring is huge. And all these different professionals have the same attitude. By the way, what about working with other professionals? What if a woman comes in and says, well, you know, I have a personal trainer and I have a naturopath and I have my herbalist and now I'm adding you to the team and I need you to work with them to get me where I want to be in terms of my goals. How does that work for you? What do you, what do, you do in a circumstance like that? I actually love it when a client comes and says that they've already got a team oh. of experts because I think that helps and it makes my job a lot easier because that frees up time and space to be able to do the dietary stuff. Yeah. So yeah. I, think, uh, I think it's fantastic. I actually encourage my clients to find a few yeah. others, so to, to include other, other um, healthcare practitioners and bring them on board because I think uh, my expertise is nutrition, that's what I know, that's what I do. I don't know anything about any other field, so although we like to think we do, I think I, I like yeah. to leave that up to, to, yeah. to the, the other, and, and likewise, I mean, I think if someone who is a herbalist is trying to do nutrition stuff, I think it just takes away from what you're trained to do. So, um, yeah, although I think you do touch on them, I think that it's, yeah. um, it's I like to just do my job. So a uh, herbalist is the same thing as an herbalist. Yeah. <laughs> with menopause metabolism slows down do you adjust the timeline or the goals and take that into account that with menopause you can't bring about change as quickly as you could when you were 30 yeah. I mean your body just doesn't respond to things as well do you take that into account and make sure that it's part of the game plan so that you're not trying to you know fight a losing battle yeah I think one of the important things to realize is that uh, Although we set goals and although we have ideas of where we'd like to go, I think it's not a race. We're not trying to race no, anyone. I think the most important thing is to figure out uh, you know, what works for your body. Are your symptoms improving? Are you feeling better? Do you have more energy? Yeah. I think focusing on those things because I think women can get so fixated on, I have to get to my goal weight. Yeah. And although that's part of the process, I think far more valuable is actually giving your body what it needs, nourishing your body, and, true, and, true. And, and loving your body through food. Yeah, that's so, a really good way to put it. So I think uh, we definitely take that into consideration to be realistic about it, but I, I like to take the focus off the weight and to focus more on other things that I think are also yeah. important. Although women love sense. focusing on weight. I know, I know. We, we, there's too much focus on weight. Yeah, right. <laughs> think about it. Definitely. So now what about the woman who is from a certain cultural or ethnic group and food plays a very big part of her cultural norms and it's just something that she has to honor and, and, and take care of because otherwise she can't do what she normally does in terms of her life. Yeah. How do you handle working with someone who needs you know, to eat foods that aren't the best things from a dietitian standpoint? Yeah. One of the first things that a dietitian will do when they come, when you come into their office, is they'll figure out what are you currently eating. They'll look at what you're doing at the moment, and yeah. from there we'll we'll figure something out going forward. So I'm definitely not when you come into my office telling you throw out everything, <laughs> everything you normally eat, all your traditional meals have to go. We work with what you're doing, and then we tailor it to something else. So we'll we'll take recipes, we'll adapt them, we look at different ways to do them, portioning. So we take all of those things into consideration because I think at the end of the day it is important to kind of be eating foods that you actually love and enjoy. Yeah. Otherwise it's going to feel like a diet. And Absolutely. that's not what we're doing. We're not doing diets. We're doing lifestyle plans yeah. and we're doing uh, meal plans that actually are sustainable for you. So you're like I am. You don't believe in dieting where there's a beginning and an end. Oh, because with anything that has an end, you end up going back to the habits you had before and you end up with the same problems again and again. So it's really about learning a whole new way of habits, a whole new way of life, uh, get a new lifestyle that involves habitual change.
Definitely. I love it. Yeah. I love it. One of the most important things is doing something that's going to be sustainable for you. Because okay. otherwise, you're just going to come back, like you say, to exactly the same point where you were. Perfect. Yeah. What about people who are vegetarian or vegan versus people who are meat eaters? Do, does, does one group have a higher success? success rate or does one group fare better with your guidance than the other or do you find that you work equally well with both of them? I think uh, both of them equally well because yeah. at the end of the day it's about your own uh, nutrition philosophy, what you believe about food and if you come in and you say I don't want to eat meat anymore, I want to do plant based which I think is very popular and yeah. It, yeah, it is. I think it's um, that's fine, we work with that and we, we, we definitely try and figure out ways that we can make sure you're getting in all the nutrients that you need that you're not missing out on important things and I think that's one of the things that a dietitian needs to do is to help you to follow yeah. the plan that you want to follow and to help you to, to navigate through that. So Good. yeah, I think definitely can work with both and do work with both. Yeah. What about grocery shopping? Because I know a lot of women feel like it's one thing to say eat a certain way, but the other part of it is shopping for the groceries and preparing foods. Yeah. Do you provide guidance from step one with the grocery shopping and on through the food preparation also? Yeah. I actually get quite a lot of women that come in and they'll say, when I go into the grocery store, I'm completely overwhelmed. Yeah. I have no idea yeah. what to do. So if you feel like that, it's not only you. I think there there are a lot of women that feel like that. And the goal is really to, um, yeah, so we can go grocery shopping with a client, definitely, and we can um, help with recipes. Um, oh. I often tell and will show kind of ways we can cook. So we can definitely do cooking demos, all of those things. So it's great. Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> help us send you out with a meal plan and you don't even know kind of what to shop or how to cook. So yeah. those are definitely steps that we take. So anyone can do it. And mm -hmm. I think it's just about um, being willing to try. That's good. the most important. That's really good. Yeah. What about society? You know, peer pressure and all this you know, tendency to want to go out and eat all the time. And when you're trying to, to stay within the realm of your guidelines, going out to eat, going to a party, being with your friends can be really difficult. And yet there's all this pressure to do that. So what do you do for a woman who says, you know, if I'm eating alone, I'm fine, but the minute something else happens, yeah. it, it just it all goes out the window. How do you, how do you counsel her? Yeah. I think it's important to realize that it's going to happen. It's part of life. You're not on a diet plan where you're going to be stuck in a room. You can't lock yourself in as much as you want to. You can't. You actually have to carry on with life. You have birthdays that are going to happen. You have dinners to attend. So the important thing actually is to, um, first of all, if you know that it's going to happen, it's actually easy because then you can kind of plan for it. You can decide, we're going to this restaurant. So I want to look at the menu, talk through it with your dietitian. Uh, you can, we, we, I discuss it with my clients, what's happening this week, what are some strategies that we can put into place. I but see. I think the most important thing is to get educated and to build up knowledge around that because like I really think it's important to know what to do in those situations because yeah. that makes it a lot easier. Yeah. And um, I definitely think you shouldn't stay at home and just avoid <laughs> all forms of social contact. Get rid of all your friends. <laughs> So uh, it's, it's, it's definitely getting equipped and knowing what to do in those situations so that you never have to feel anxious or worried when you go to a social setting because you know what to do. Okay. And tell me, there's a big word that makes me say it's a huge subject matter and that is the word breakfast. Yes. Tell me about breakfast, the pros, the cons, the big yeah. mistakes, whatever. What do you think of breakfast? <laughs> I think it's definitely one of those meals that uh, gets looked over quite a lot and actually one of the most valuable meals that you can have because if you're having breakfast, it's really a way for your body to get the message of, okay, the day has started, get going, like, for your body to know that it, your metabolism gets going. It's um, Another thing is I always say, see breakfast as an opportunity in every meal to nourish your body. Yeah. So if you're nourishing your body, you wouldn't skip over meals because you know that it's important and your body needs the nutrients. Mm -hmm. So in a phase such as menopause, uh, specifically as well, I think breakfast becomes so much more important because your body need, has far more requirements and different requirements yeah. to, to what it did before. So I yeah. think 
but it's important to realize that you you need to have the breakfast there. It doesn't have to be like I always say, like a big fry up, and it doesn't have to be eggs and bacon and mushrooms and um, you know the the sauces and whatever. you need all the good stuff. <laughs> don't have to can, but it doesn't have to. <laughs> so I think it's just starting to incorporate something small, which I think is very important. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, vegans and vegetarians. Is it common for them to have nutritional deficiencies or not get enough protein? Do you, do, do you warn them about that and guide them through those pitfalls, really, with those, those yeah. kinds of eating restrictions? I think that traditionally we used to think that if you're doing vegan or plant-based that you'd be missing a lot of your nutrients. And I think that traditionally we used to be very scared of, oh, you have to get in the right amounts. But I think we're starting to see that it's actually not that difficult to meet protein yeah. requirements from a plant-based point of view. Yeah. So yeah. if you want to do it, uh, as long as you're aware that you do need to look at your combinations, yeah. you can't just be eating broccoli for breakfast. That's right. That's, <laughs> right. That's right. You, That's right. You do have to consider yeah. the, the combinations a little bit. Uh, so as long as you're aware of that and are uh, guided through some of the, the specifics, it's yeah. not actually something that I think is such a big a big issue. Yeah, it's, it's mostly awareness and it was like so many of these things that yeah. I talk about with, with my viewers. Once you're aware of something, you, you make all these changes just because yeah. you know what to look for and it becomes really kind of second nature, right? Definitely, definitely. So then here's my big question. What about alcohol? <laughs> alcohol is a huge craving when it comes to menopause. And I'm sure that you get a lot of women who just really imbibe a lot of alcohol. It's a big part of their social life. It's a big part of their daily life. They yeah. like it. Yeah. And what do you do? How do you work with people yeah. who are really married to their alcohol? Yeah. <laughs> So I get a lot of uh, clients that will come in and they'll say on the first session, you can tell me to do anything, don't take my wine. I need my wine. I need my wine. <laughs> so I hear take that a lot. Take my kids. <laughs> take everyone else and you've always my wine. <laughs> so I think uh, it, it definitely Aww. is a concern. Uh, but one of the things that I always explain is that if you're eating foods that are nourishing your body, your cravings will be less. So that's the first thing is, looking for foods that actually nourish, you'll find that your cravings will yeah. probably decrease. Yeah. And you don't have to stop drinking alcohol altogether, although to some degree <laughs> it does make it a bit harder for the body to do what it needs to do. It definitely is. Uh, it's an empty calorie, so that means it doesn't add any benefit to your body. It's yeah. just empty calories as sugar is, as anything else in that, in that category is. So it is just being aware of that and probably I would say we do need to do a bit of an exchange, being aware of it, we can't just eat and drink as much as we want to, but do just need to be aware of it. So <laughs> the alcohol can stay. <laughs> hey, aren't you happy? <laughs> <laughs> okay, tell me about the inhibitions. You know, what I find is that women have these big inhibitions in going to get the help they need. Yeah for the various problems and issues that they face with menopause, whether it's depression or urinary incontinence, all these things, they feel like they're alone and they're kind of afraid to reach out and get help. And what they don't realize is that we deal with this all the time. Yeah. So how, how inhibited do people tend to be before they come to see you and what do they express to you once they come to yeah. you for the first time? Yeah. I think one of the biggest things is that women feel that if they come to the dietitian, they're going to have to do an overhaul of their whole life. They feel like they're going to have to go home, clean out the pantry, throw out absolutely everything, no more food in the fridge, going to be eating carrot sticks, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and dinner for the rest of the year. So I think it's it's realizing that hopefully in, from from our conversation as well to realize that the dietitian is there to partner with you. And somebody that really wants to help you to guide you in the process. It's not about doing an overhaul and going on a strict diet. And, yeah. and I mean, it's, yeah. I don't have expectations. When a client comes to me, I have no expectation of what's going to happen. We just go, sure. we just take it sure. where it needs to go. Yeah. And if we feel that, you know, we work with what you've given us. So yeah. if you say, this is where I want to go, I help and I guide you yeah. in the best way that I can. But I think um, realizing that. You don't, you're not disappointing me if you're not doing something. It's not me that you're, you're disappointing. It's all about you and what's us wanting to get you to the I best I have those buttons space. that say, it's all about me. I was oh, really? It's all about you, see? She said that. Yeah, definitely. Remember that. <laughs> so, what, okay. so what about the woman who comes to you and 
you give her a game plan and she agrees to everything, yeah, 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 I'm eager to do this and she's really eager to participate and do it right, and then she comes back and she tells you she's really following it, but you know darn well that she's not, okay? And I know this is about different men, different styles, personality styles and stuff. And yeah, I've had patients who are really being dishonest with themselves and dishonest with me. And my way of handling it, I'm a very, I'm a very brutally honest and blunt person. <laughs> and when I have a patient who's not telling the truth, I just look at her and go, you know, I don't believe you. <laughs> and she usually looks shocked, but then we start laughing because she realizes that you know, I'm just trying to help her. Yeah. If I don't have a full deck, and if I can't work with facts, then I can't help you. And I can deal with anything. I you can look see. right at me and say, I will not do this. I'm never going to do this. And I'll yeah. go, fine. So we work with what you will do. Yeah. So how do you handle it when you have a, a person, a woman who's feeding you a bunch of you know, non-truths in terms of what she's really doing? And of course, she's getting nowhere. But it's only because she's lying to you and to herself. Yeah. And if she would just tell the truth, it would make such a difference. Yeah. I think that uh, the important thing to realize is that she wouldn't be coming or you wouldn't be going if you don't feel that it's something you want to do. So the first oh, thing I know true. is the fact that you're in my office, the fact that you keep coming back for your appointments tells me you want to do this. There you go. So if there's a disconnect between what you want to do and what you are doing, we need to figure out uh -huh. how can we bridge that gap for you. Yeah. And why is it that you're feeling like you can't do it? Is it that you don't feel equipped? So what are the barriers? So and then we'll set small goals. So I'll say, okay, look, let's this week just try, forget everything. Just try, <laughs> just try and eat breakfast, like you say. Or just try and do five meals, smaller meals a day. Or just try and uh, prepare one meal for yourself this week yeah. that wasn't at a baby restaurant. Step. So baby, baby steps, hundred yeah. percent. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then at the end of the day, I mean, if, if that doesn't work, then she's just wasting her own money and time. Right, because right, right. She's going through the motions. So it's yeah. Me. So it's me. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just being honest yeah. in, in that in that process as well. And what would you say are the biggest mistakes that women make? Just the big, huge, the, the, the big top mistakes that are the most common. What would what would those be? The first one that I can definitely say, and I think that's the world over an issue, is that women believe that there is a quick fix. <laughs> so they believe that there is one meal plan that's going to work. This thing that this celebrity did on this day oh, has yeah. to be the thing that works. Oh, yeah. There's this new diet pull, this new book, this new fad, this new this, this new that. <laughs> Anything, anywhere where somebody promises you that it's going to be a quick fix and a short road and a, and a slow thing, you're going to feel tired by the end of it. Honestly, you are. You're going to feel exhausted because it's not yeah. going to work. Yeah. And you're going to have put your hopes in something again that hasn't given you the results that right. you want. So, right. so I think it's just realizing that there is really no one way. And the only way to do it is to figure out what works for you and what doesn't. Yeah. And if there was a quick fix, everyone would be doing it. <laughs> That's what I always say. We'd all figure it out, wouldn't we? <laughs> totally. We would all be doing this one thing that is the quick fix. So don't be fooled into it. Rather do it uh, slow and steady than try and do it quick and, yeah. and instant. So yeah. that would probably be the number one thing that I find for women. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Tend to believe. Thank you, Carrie. I so appreciate it so, so much. So, ladies, there you have it from the true professional, Carrie. You don't care. <laughs> and we thank her so much for coming. I hope you've gotten some real help and and released all your inhibitions about seeing a dietitian and nutritionist. Because as you can see, they do things the way I do. We're all about tabling things to you and wanting you to be able to manage things your way and within the realm of what you can manage in your life in the you know, the day-to-day -day bits of it. I mean, this isn't about trying to transform everything overnight and it's not about trying to do something the way someone else would do it. Yeah. So don't don't feel inhibited. Go see dietitians, nutritionists. They're fun, they're spunky, they're beautiful. <laughs> do it. I mean just just do it. And you know, they aren't gonna all have the beautiful accent that Kari has. You know, she, she I love the way I love her accent. <laughs> but Cape anyway, Town way. the Cape Town way. But just go see your dietitian nutritionist. They're there to help you and they really enjoy what they do just as I enjoy teaching you about menopause. So let those inhibitions fly out the window and go, go help yourself. Thanks for coming today, ladies. We appreciate it. We'll talk to you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>